Well, I was so drunk I can't remember. <laughs> Wild Geese 3. <laughs> Man, the myth, the methane. <laughs> I wanted to pretend that I wasn't feeling a little jolly belly. Oh, I'm a fan of uh, Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, how did you get into directing one of my favorite Next Generation episodes of Genesis? Genesis. Well, Genesis was, uh, I had been wanting to direct ever since the very beginning. I had directed when I was uh, teaching in universities, so um, that was something I knew I loved to do. So I asked, um, do we really need this? I don't know if we do. Uh, I asked uh, the producers right away if I could. But it, it, it was tough because I was female. It w you might have noticed we did not have really many female directors. Later, they started to have a few. And it was tricky because, and this is, this is funny because I, I know it's hard to describe all this, but when, I could not go into the producer's office, they were all, male producers at that time. You can't go in and do what some of the guys were able to do, which is throw yourself on the couch, put your feet up, and just hang and talk. Because that would be seen as, like, a woman doesn't go in there and do that, right? So there's always this kind of different <laughs> line to tread. So I couldn't do that, and that's how, that's how you get mentored. You get mentored when you're friends. And I, I my first teaching job at, oh good, shoot back. My first teaching job at the University of Pittsburgh, which was a full-time position, um, I thought I was going to hate it. I loved it. I loved Pittsburgh. I loved the, my students. They were people whose parents had been in the steel mill working, and they, when they said they were going to be theater, you know, do that, they were really risking a lot, and they worked. They were awesome. A lot of them have become very successful. But I was really the junior member and the female member in the department. and. Uh, I am still friends with those men, and they were all married, and we were all great buddies. And for some reason, it was okay. And it's because I think they were not as old or something, I don't know what. But I thought it was always gonna be like that. I mean, I could speak my mind. I was in my 20s, I could just, you know, whatever, and it was fine. And when I was, I just did like a couple years ago a convention in Pittsburgh, and we all met up for dinner. I'm telling you, it was like no time had passed. They were awesome. And um, that, to me, is, what I thought every situation in work was going to be in my life. And that's not the way it is. So I really, I had a harder time in the whole understanding of, I think, the studio system and everything. I really, really did not get it. It took a long time and I made a lot of mistakes. And that's what happened second season. So I was fired after first season, even though my character was like the third most popular character. But I had had arguments about <coughs> sexism and racism in the scripts. <laughs> I, I was like, wait a minute, come on, a mother does more than that, come on, come on. And I really pissed this man off. And I, I, I wasn't doing it to piss him off. It's, I couldn't do his job, I couldn't sit and write like that. But I didn't realize that I couldn't speak up, if you see what I mean. I didn't realize I have to do all this other stuff. And so that was a hard lesson, right? But I was okay about it, but then they asked me back and fired him. So that's just the way it worked. <laughs> but, you know, it could have not happened that way. And you still have to live with, you know, you have to, you have to figure out how can I be myself and not piss everybody off. <laughs> not always easy, but that's kind of been one of the things that I've been, been figuring out through my life. And uh, that's that you do the best you can do and you try to listen and uh, hopefully... I learned from that, and uh, hopefully, you know, um, others will too.